every single bill and every single coin that you have in your pocket doesn't even belong to you. It belongs to the Federal Reserve plus interest. Every bill, again, in our pockets is an unbacked liability being dispersed by a bankrupt government. Once people realize they're working for nothing and all this is just illusion, it will come down. This video is brought to you by Reluctant Preppers. Click here to subscribe for free to ReluctantPreppers.com. Don't miss your chance to join me and 14 of the most influential thought leaders in the world of alternative media as we discuss the elevated threat level to your liberty and what you can do about it at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium in Las Vegas, February 21st and 22nd. Go to LibertyMastermind.us to register. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with FinanceandLiberty.com and back with us today is Gregory Manorino from TradersChoice.net. Greg, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Elijah. I appreciate it. It's been a while. All right, so on Tuesday, the House voted to raise the debt ceiling until 2015 without any conditions. So I guess to start off, were you surprised by this and do you, it, do you think it'll pass the Senate? Absolutely, it'll pass. They, they they know exactly what they're doing, Elijah. We've spoken about this this thing that they have going on for quite a while now. They, they, they're they going to add more debt to the system. Debt is the problem. They don't want to address it. They understand that. Um, it's just to fuel this thing, to keep it going. But again, what is this leading to? Um, <laughs> a, a, an absolute meltdown of the financial system. There is no way out of this. And, and they understand that. That's why they're going to keep hyperinflating this debt problem. Look what happened to the markets. The markets love this. The markets love yelling. They love the debt. They love the, the whole mechanism of an, infusing liquidity into the system any way they can to keep it propped up. And that's all this is. It's being propped up. So why do you see that the House voted to raise the debt limit with no conditions? Because I think they realize, like everyone else, I mean, I think, first of all, this is all smoke and mirrors. Whatever they're, they're trying to tell people, they understand this. I write about this in my book, The Politics of Money. The, all of these politicians, they understand the situation that we're in. Um, it, the system demands that debt be borrowed into existence in order to function. They will do it any way possible. Um, it, it, through any mechanism possible, they're going to make people think one thing and do quite the other. Um, this is how we know that the system is, you know, completely corrupted, and we're probably very close to to a major financial event occurring here um, because of this issue. And they're going to try again, just to everything they can do and things that we can't even think about yet. And this is all just part of it. That's all this is. Right. And I mean, it. I, I know I've made this point before. It, I mean, this whole concept of a debt ceiling just seems to make no sense. I mean, what is the point of a debt ceiling if it's always raised? Yeah, it's bizarre. You're, you're exactly right. You know, they don't want to address the problem. Elijah, here's the issue here. And I, I get a lot of comments about this from people. What they don't understand is this is not a financial problem. It really isn't. It's coming down to resources. What we have done or we're allowing to do is borrow, pull, and literally steal monies from the future to live a better now. This, this scheme, as hard as they are trying to keep this going, will not go on forever. This is inflating the bubble in debt. The issue here is resources. We know this for a fact. Anyone that is listening, I am urging them to do their own research. Look at every single economic and financial bubble that has occurred in history. Go back as far as you want. Every single one has one common thing. That is, they all burst. Why do they burst? Very simple, because they rise above a level that can be sustained by any means. So right now, we have a Fed in collusion with our policy makers, in collusion with everything, the Wall Street banks, this whole thing, inflating this bubble, hyperinflating this bubble. It will burst at one point. And then what's that? what it comes down to is resources is going to 
cause a situation where resources will not be available to people, uh, Elijah, and we're going to see millions, millions, if not tens of millions of people die on a worldwide scale when this bubble bursts. So people can think about this in terms of finance, but it's in terms of survival. And that's what's going to happen when this bubble bursts, because every other bubble linked to this is going to burst as well. They're all interconnected. And there lies the danger. It is, without a doubt, the greatest threat to humankind. I wanted to discuss about, you know, the debt right now in the United States, the official national debt per taxpayer. So the if you divide the debt by the amount of taxpayers in the United States, the total amount of debt per taxpayer is $150,000. And if you un include unfunded liabilities, which they really should include in the debt, it's over a million dollars. So do you see that? I mean, eventually, I mean, this has to be paid off, doesn't it? Or do you see it? Do you see taxpayers actually being taxed? Or would it be another way they pay the debt? <laughs> it's never going to be paid back. It's impossible. It cannot be paid back. That's why it's in a bubble. And the bubble will burst. Uh, and, and that's another thing I want to adjust just real quick here. So, you know, recently we had this pullback in the market. I timed that to the day just about. Check my channel. Uh, anyone who wants to go to my YouTube channel can see this. Um, there was a video I did titled The Specter of a Market Correction is Rising just before this happened. Now, everyone said, hey, Greg, is this the big one? I said, no. What I did as this market was falling, I bought the dips down, 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 down. Now, how did I know this was not the big one? Because it's not going to occur in the stock market. It's going to occur in the debt market, the bond market. That's when this thing is going to completely explode. Um, and that's how it's going to go down, in my opinion, because that is the main, main bubble. I'm not saying that stocks are not overvalued. I've gone over at length how I think they are by a, a whole multitude of metrics. But that's not the issue. The issue we have to worry about here is debt. And that's what, what they're doing now. They're fueling this. They will continue to fuel this through every mechanism known and unknown until it bursts. It, it can't stop. It cannot be paid back. The system demands that the debt be added on in perpetuity. It, 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 once we admit we can't pay this or we force people to pay it, it's over. That's the system. It's a system designed around debt, not around wealth. Uh, and, and, and as soon as people understand this, the better off they'll all be, even on an individual level. If you understand that the problem is debt and what you need to do to avoid that debt, let me put another perspective on this for you and for your, for your listeners here. It, it sounds kind of crazy, but every single bill and every single coin that you have in your pocket doesn't even belong to you. It belongs to the Federal Reserve plus interest, interest that they print out of thin air. It's owed back to them. It's not ours. So every bill is a unit of debt. It's not a unit of wealth. That's the system. That's the way it's designed. And that is why it's going to in inevitably. And when, when, when people realize the system is built on a house of cards, it will come down. I mean, exactly. Speaking of that money is actually just backed by debt now. I read an article uh, on the Federal Reserve, federalreserve.gov, the official website of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, and they clearly stated that now instead of our dollar actually being backed by gold, it's just backed by U.S. government bonds, a liability of taxpayers. So basically, the currency that you hold right now is, I believe Mike Maloney said it this way, it's basically a promise to tax you in the future. Here's another way to think about it. Every bill, again, in our pockets is an unbacked liability being dispersed by a bankrupt government. They all do the same thing. So, again, once people realize they're working for nothing and all of this is just illusion, it's, this whole thing is built upon nothing. It will come down. Um, and I, I think, and, and it goes back to what you and I have spoken about almost since our first interview, become your own central bank, people, get yourself away from this paper Ponzi scheme that they have going on and get yourself into real hard assets, period. This has been my message since I sat down in front of a computer and started talking about this stuff uh, publicly. Uh, it's just so important for people to understand. But what does this mean in the grand scheme of things? You know, people say, hey, you know, Greg, you're a doomer, you're a gloomer. No, I am not. 
I what I am is pre presenting people with the opportunity of a lifetime. That's what this is. Even the equity markets, this whole thing across the spectrum is nothing but opportunity for people who just have enough, who have even one functioning brain cell can understand how the system works, how it's designed, and how it will inevitably fail. If you bet against this, and how do you bet against this, Elijah? It's very simple. We know the problem is death, right? This is why I'm such a precious metal advocate. You bet against the debt specifically by holding precious metals. It's literally taking the short end of the trade. That's how I think I'm a trader. You know that. So I'm holding the short end of this trade and I continue to add to that position every single month. Every month I allocate funds that I put into precious metals. It's no secret. I talk about this on my blog all the time. I'm betting against the debt, just like major countries of the world are doing the same thing. Any individual, any country, any business, any central bank that is holding gold, silver, or whatever hard assets is betting against the debt bubble. The debt bubble is going to burst. And when it bursts, the, the, the realization of what these things are actually worth will come to fruition. And, 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 and really, that's been my message since day one. You know that. Uh, but I don't believe people understand that this is not just a financial problem. This is an issue about resources, period. So what do you see? I know, you know, if people have the money, it would be a, an amazing idea to, you know, invest in precious metals. They're a great opportunity right now. But for a lot of Americans who are just surviving paycheck to paycheck and living off that, and also they're looking at Social Security to provide for them in their retirement, I mean, a lot of people are thinking, and probably correctly, that Social Security will not be there. So what can people do to prepare for this crisis if they don't have much money you know the, there's people need to understand that when this does happen um there will be pandemonium uh, in the streets outside their homes there's no doubt about that um when people are not able to access things they basic needs that they they have to acquire to live so i mean there's, that that's the first order of business is survival I mean, if we talk about this on the scale that if this bubble bursts, when it bursts, um, that resources will become scarce, they need to have basic necessities, a storage of food, a storage of water. There's no doubt about that. But I would say this. I find it very hard to believe that people can't scrounge up a few dollars and start putting away fr you know, fractional amounts of metal, silver. Silver, without a doubt is the best investment vehicle in the history of the world, in my opinion here. Again, this is just my opinion. People just do your own research about it. Uh, I have been investing heavily in these things, especially silver, for years now. I will continue to do that. Why? Because I'm betting against the debt, period. Um, so what people need to do is forget about buying that pack of cigarettes or whatever else they don't need and start thinking along the lines of survival, because that's what this is going to come down to. At one point here, and even those who are the well best prepared are not going to be able to deal with this. This is a situation again. It's the greatest threat to humankind, bar none. Um, but our politicians want to address it. They understand the system needs and demands that this cash be borrowed into existence in perpetuity. In perpetuity can never happen. So we know it's going to explode. You cannot keep diluting the money supply and printing cash out of thin air and expect there not to be consequences. We're already seeing consequences of this. We have the Federal Reserve recently who decided to uh, cut back on their bond buying purchases and mortgage backed securities. What is this doing? It's rattling the emerging markets. Why is that? Why are they doing this? The Federal Reserve is very manipulative, Elijah. What they're doing here is they understand that by rattling the emerging markets, they're going to force investors into U.S. equities, into bonds, because someone's got to take up that slack. That's just, they're doing this on purpose. I've gone over this recently in, in, in another interview with Brett Hunter, as a matter of fact, and uh, in, in videos. But if you really look back and you see how dastardly this is, but also at the same time how I guess you have to say there's some type of a genius element into this as well. The Fed is 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 playing a very dangerous game with the with the global markets and global currency right now the u.s equity market right now um the u.s bond market the debt market even the dollar right now are the best looking ladies at the ball that's why there's going to be money flooding into this market again until this explodes and i we if, if the fed has become so desperate that they need to rattle the the, the global markets to keep us propped up and going you know 
is the situation is getting very dire. Right. And speaking of the Federal Reserve, I wanted to turn our focus now to um, Janet Yellen is now the head of the Federal Reserve, and she gave her first congressional testimony on Tuesday. And I wanted to read this quote from her, which I just found kind of scary in a way, because she stated that Ben Bernanke's leadership, quote, helped make our economy and financial system stronger and ensured that the Federal Reserve is transparent and accountable. I pledge to continue that work, end quote. Now, I can't see anything in that statement that, I mean, all of it I would disagree with. And the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has more than quintupled while Bernanke was the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Bernanke has done basically an historic expansion of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, expansion of the money supply. And it basically seems like Janet Yellen is going to do exactly the same as Bernanke. Well, yeah, look what the market did today. The market went up over 200, almost 200 points today. Um, you know, this this is all foreseen here. You know, if, think of it in, in, in these terms here. Um, and, and this is a fact, in my opinion, here again. Fact, in my opinion. And, I, and I've said this. I don't know if you and I have spoken about this specifically. But the, the crash of 2008, Elijah, that was the party over moment. This is a side effect that is terminal. That's why they're printing and trying to you know, stimulate their way out. It can't happen. It cannot happen. The patient is is dead, um, you know, brain dead with the heart that keeps beating, but it's not going to keep going forever here. And, uh, and really, that's what people need to take away from this entire thing is look, step back, everyone, please, and look at what's going on here. Does this seem sustainable? Does it seem like we can keep borrowing cash in the future to live a better now? We can print cash in thin air. In, in, to, the, to the tune of trillions and trillions of dollars, and there not be consequences. Are you kidding me? If people can't see the writing on the wall, um, and I would imagine people that are listening to this can see it clearly uh, at this point, uh, and I have to commend them. Uh, if they don't see, if people that don't see this now, they have to understand, or we need to understand, that these people will not survive this. Um, this is a natural selection that is occurring here, Elijah. Um, that's the truth. There are, there are going to be those that come through this, and there are going to be those that don't. The vast majority will not. Uh, and again, I really have to look at this on the from the perspective that this is just a way of <laughs> the the market just or, or or whatever you want to call it, just weeding out those that are either just too ignorant to understand this, or won't see it, or in denial, or whatever it might be. Um, but the, as harsh as that might sound, that is the truth. People that are being woken up by shows like yours uh, are, are really um, are, are the select few here that are able to see through this and understand the perspective that this thing is going to explode. And getting back to what Janet Yellen said today, she basically, to sum up some of her points, was she was saying that... Um, the recent volatility in the markets, they don't see that as a huge concern, but they're still going to look at, they're going to still consider the market in their decisions of monetary policy. But so the Federal Reserve tapered from $85 billion to $75 billion. They tapered again from 75 to $65 billion a month of how much they're printing. Um, but I mean, in my opinion, it doesn't seem like a huge difference. It's kind of like, you know, driving towards a brick wall at 85 miles per hour, or 65 miles an hour, it doesn't really matter. It just lengthens the time before you hit the brick wall. But what is your perspective on, do you see that the Fed will taper again under Yellen, or do you see them um, just increasing the amount of money that they're printing? Well, I think Yellen made it clear today that she said um, that, yes, the Fed will be looking at the markets and see what's going on here, and they could, they could stop the taper. This is just, first of all, this is no taper. All right, let me just, in my opinion, what we have here is just what Ben Bernanke said they were going to do when Ben was in office. He said they could cut, they could increase, they could do whatever they want. It's just depending on the data. Uh, I think they had to do something. Then I'm, I am more than certain that they understood by, by pulling some of this liquidity from the global markets, the, the emerging markets would get rattled. And that would force cash into the U.S. equity market, into the U.S. bond market, because, again, still the best looking lady at the ball here. So this is all a grand manipulation on a scale that is simply unimaginable 
to the average person. If they, but they need to understand that as gloomy and doomy as this might sound, this is opportunity. This is the opportunity of our lifetimes. People are going to look back upon this time here and say, wow, I really wish I would have taken advantage of this. I wish I would have taken advantage of that. And most of those people out there that just don't get it, they're, they're in the most trouble of them all. And, the, and those are the ones I am trying to reach with my blog, um, with my book, with you know people I talk to on the street. And why I think it's so important for people to listen to shows like yours. It's, it's critical. Uh, again, this is, this is not just a financial issue here. This is an issue that's going to come down to human life. Right. I mean, it's, it's really important that people like you and I do start speaking out, you know, creating our own web channels and speaking out and getting as many people informed as possible. Absolutely. I urge people to do that all the time. I tell people, please start your own channel. Start your own movement. It has to start with you, with the, the individual person. Uh, and then, you know, if if we don't make a difference in each other's lives in some way, what, what worth do we have? I don't care how many millions you may have sitting in the bank. don't matter. If you're not making a positive difference in other people's lives, you might as well just not exist at all. And that's really what I'm trying to do here, what I've been about, um, and, and, and what your channel is about, too. There's a lot of people out here trying to, to raise awareness, and that's all this is, is trying to raise awareness and, and letting people – you know, go go with whatever they want to do. They want it, They think this sounds interesting. They think, hey, you know, maybe there's something to do this, to do with this. Well, then that's just great. Do your own research. Go out there and make a difference in the world. If not, just ignore this. But if they do, they're ignoring this at their own peril. I mean, we all hope that it's not going to get as dire as saying that many, many people will perish. But I, I think definitely it with every crisis that comes, at the least, it seems like that government tries to save people and our liberties perish. Would you agree with that? And what can we do to protect our liberties? Raise up your voice. People are letting their liberties be taken away every day. Let me just put another perspective on this for people so maybe this will open their eyes a little bit. And I have said this many times, I outlined this in my book, Politics of Money. Our government, and this all plays into raising the debt ceiling and everything else that we spoke about, is well aware that a monster is coming. And how we know this is you can look at what they've done to the, to the police in every state in the union. The police have now been militarized. Why? Why do the police now have military weapons, military tactics, military training? Um, it's because they understand that the social unrest that's gonna come out of this, they're gonna need more than a police force. Every state in the union has a militarized police force now. And and I have friends in from pretty high places, and I am telling all of you listeners right here that they know exactly what's going on here, and they're getting prepared for it. The question is, are you, are they, uh, I'm talking about your listeners here, um, our government knows it's going to happen, the military knows it's going to happen, the people are being kept in the dark, Elijah. It's thankfully, through shows like yours, people are getting to know the truth. All right. Well, Greg Manorino, thank you so much for joining us today. Where can people find you on the internet? Um, you can go to my website, traderstewards.net. You can find you can find me anywhere. I'm everywhere. Um, YouTube, uh, I do a business day market report um, Monday through Friday. I go over the pertinent events. Uh, and uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping people listen to this stuff, Elijah. I really am. All right. Once again, thank you so much for your time today, Greg. Thanks, Elijah. Go to financeandliberty.com and subscribe for free for more interviews and financial insight.